Okay, welcome. This presentation will address responsibility for health promotion and it will address the key question which is in your syllabus. Describe the various health promotion roles and responsibilities adopted by individuals, groups and governments. And of course, describe, you'll be asked to provide characteristics and features of each of these different sectors. So in your previous presentation, you should have learned that health promotion is any activity that enables people to increase control over their health, to improve health of people and also prevent illness and disease within the community. So that idea of enabling people or giving them the skills to be able to have more control over their health. And that brings us to the question, who is responsible for health promotion? And there are a range of sectors responsible, including individuals, community groups and schools, governments, local, state and commonwealth, international organisations and non-government organisations. Beginning with individuals, it's important to understand that individuals play a crucial role in health promotion. Through personal behaviours, individuals can promote the health of themselves and others, but for them to be effective, they need to be empowered. That is, they need to have control over their own health and they, they need to be able to have the capacity to make their own decisions and participate in their own health decision making. So how does an individual become empowered? When they have access to accurate and reliable information, they improve their knowledge and understanding and this increases their capacity to make safe decisions. For example, if you know about the effects of alcohol on your body, you're more likely to make a safe and healthy decision. Involvement in decision making is also important. The opportunity to develop personal skills is also important. And also to become empowered, an individual requires social and economic support. There are various individuals involved in or responsible for promoting health within the community. General practitioners, counsellors, dentists, health workers, community nurses and dietitians are all individuals in the community that have the responsibility of promoting the health of others. For example, a general practitioner is responsible for promoting health at every patient encounter. So this means whenever a GP sees a patient, particularly if they present with a cough or bronchitis or something like that, it's the responsibility of the GP to not only treat the condition but also provide some health promotion information about smoking, uh, asking some questions to the patient. Do you smoke? Have you smoked in the past? If you do smoke, here are some strategies that you can use to quit because it's much better for your health, etc. So the GP has an important role to play, as do the other individuals. When individuals are promoting health, they're able to form partnerships, advocate, generate community support and work collaboratively. And when this occurs, individuals are very effective in promoting health. Moving on to community groups and schools, and you would know uh, being a, a student at a school, that schools have various policies and strategies to promote the health of young people. This is particularly important because young people spend a lot of time at school, so it's important that they are healthy places. So sun safety policies are important. Uh, the PDHPE program encourages young people to make safe decisions. Canteens provide healthy food to provide a supportive environment. There are anti-bullying policies to support the welfare of students and also sports equipment to encourage physical activity. PDHPE plays a crucial role because it develops the, under, the knowledge and understanding of young people and develops their skills to improve their health literacy, but also it, uh, it advocates for, uh, for health, meaning that it, it actually promotes health. And it also provides the opportunity to develop physical activity skills. There are various other school health promotion initiatives, such as partnerships with the National Heart Foundation through Jump Rope for Heart, the Health Promoting Schools Framework, Premier Sporting Challenge, and also Mind Matters, which is a national mental health initiative. Other groups within the society include sporting organisations, and a great example is Good Sports, which is a non-government organisation that aims to create healthy sporting environments that promote or discourage alcohol consumption, smoking and drug use. So the aim is to uh, capture the attention of young people through sport and provide an environment where sporting clubs are able to, to implement strategies 
to reduce alcohol consumption, smoking and drug use. Moving on to non-government organisations, and non-government organisations include the Heart Foundation and the Cancer Council. These organisations are generally non-profit. They work locally, nationally and internationally. They receive funding from a variety of sources such as fundraising and also government funding. And they usually focus on a specific issue. For example, the Heart Foundation focuses on heart disease. There are various non-government organisations in our community that do great work and they work in close consultation with governments and community groups to improve the health of individuals and promote the health of individuals. Some key roles of NGOs include raising awareness, educating, providing accurate information for people in the community, funding and conducting research, acting as support services and advocating for particular causes. Moving on to government, and you need to be aware of the three levels of government and their roles and responsibilities. So you've got local, state and commonwealth government or federal government. And we'll start with federal or the commonwealth government. And they're responsible for developing policies, identifying health priority areas such as cardiovascular disease and cancer, addressing the health priorities, giving direction to the states and local governments, providing the bulk of funding for health promotion within the country, regulating and creating legislation, and also coordinating health promotion in the community. There are some key Commonwealth campaigns that are very successful, and some include the National Tobacco Campaign, the National Binge Drinking Campaign, and the National Drug Strategy, amongst many others. The Commonwealth Government works with many agencies within the community, such as state governments, local governments, but also non-government organisations and other industry groups to create effective health promotion campaigns. And the example shown is the National Tobacco Campaign, which works with the Commonwealth Government working in close consultation with Cancer Council, Heart Foundation and the Australian Medical Association. So each state government works in close consultation with the Commonwealth. They receive funding from the Commonwealth to promote issues that are specific to the needs of the, of the people in the state. Uh, each state uh, government has its own health department, which is separated into health, uh, into area health services, which focus on specific communities. And they may have specific health promotion initiatives. For example, the New South Wales state government is focused on lockout laws in pubs and bars to reduce the amount of alcohol-fueled violence in the community. They also regulate uh, laws around smoking in work environments and public places and they also work hard to reduce risk on our roads uh, through drink driving campaigns and other road safety initiatives. Moving on to local government and local government have specific health roles. They work obviously in close consultation with the state government and the commonwealth but key health promotion initiatives such as sanitation and rubbish removal uh, pool fencing is regulated by local government and also uh, food handling and hygiene is also regulated by local government. A few other things that local government are responsible for is things like safe play equipment in parks, opportunities for people to become physically active, open spaces uh, such as parks, cycling and walking paths and long-term environmental planning. Moving on to international organisations, and you need to be aware of the World Health Organisation as the major international organisation responsible for health promotion. So it provides leadership on health issues causing worldwide concern. So if there's a disease that affects lots of people around the world, for example, we had the Zika virus, which was spreading throughout South America and around the world, the World Health Organisation came up with a strategy that encourage people not to visit particular areas uh, to avoid the spread of that particular disease. So it coordinates international public health issues. It works with governments, non-government organisations and other agencies to establish health promotion strategies. And it sets international health standards and tries to raise the level of health around the world. It's important to understand that 
individuals, communities and governments working together has great benefits. Um, it encourages participation, it empowers individuals and strengthens community action and it can ensure the message is relevant for the population. If more people are involved in health promotion then the message is more likely to, to be made relevant for the community. It's cost effective, meaning that um, non-government organisations can contribute funding to health promotion through their fundraising and money is saved overall if more sectors are working together and it encourages information sharing and just overall with more agencies working together on an issue they're more likely to um, promote it better so hopefully you're able to answer the question uh, that was set out at the beginning of the video and I look forward to working with you in class on this topic. Thank you for listening.